right, hi there. Welcome to um, February's Foodie Chat. I am down at the remarkable Swamp Community Gardens at uh, the Central Coast Wetlands with a dear friend of mine, but also colleague and also all-round rock star, <laughs> Sherilyn Darcy. Hi. Thank you, Sherilyn. It's a pleasure. Um, Sherilyn is the garden curator at the moment here uh, at Swamp, at Swamp Community Garden here on the Central Coast up in Tuggera. Uh, she is also an avid community creator and has worked for years creating community gardens and community collaborations with art and the environment. Um, one uh, notable place that some of you might be familiar is the Manly Environment Centre down on the northern beaches in Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, Sherilyn has also travelled around the world um, with her husband's work and wherever she was, be it in the United States or on the border to Mexico, she was putting herself out there to create a connection with the community culture and bring that power to nature and land. Mm. She is also an acclaimed author with over 20 um, books published uh, around the world uh, about ethnobotany, um, flowers, gardening, horticulture, and the magic of nature and the power of it. So I'm super thrilled, C, to have you here today. <laughs> um, we're gonna be talking about many different things yep. um but obviously with a connection to people being the community families and children we are on site outside we've got people mowing lawns and uh trains in the background <laughs> so i hope that you can hear us so see thank you so much for being Thanks. here um my first kind of question which i think is often quite interesting to mm -hmm. people is where your passion for gardening and nature and flowers and plants has come from and whether that was something that um, was there something influential in your life as a young person mm -hmm. um that um sparked that passion or what was it that where you got that passion from well, like a lot of people who love gardening, it's family. That's where it started for me. And we, I was brought up in the inner west of Sydney to start with in uh, Lilyfield, which is yeah. right between Leichhardt and Balmain. And we did have, a, you know, a typical three, I think it's, I can't even remember now, three or four bedroom home. And my mum is the one who gardens. So she's yeah. always, probably because we were a, a Brady Bunch type of family. So I had stepbrothers and stepsister and a, step, a fantastic stepdad. And we, mum grew a lot of our, grew all of our herbs, a lot of our vegetables as well, and did that in that, that place in the inner west. Yes. And it wasn't thought of as unusual. I think back then it was just what you did if you had the area in those it, sort of space. working class yeah. areas. We then, uh, my parents sea changed when I was uh, about 14 to Golgong, which is out in the central uh, west of New South Wales. Golgong. Yeah, yeah and they, and what they did was yeah. um, they, they, they had started a hobby farm, a large hobby farm, but we grew everything that we ate there, as wow. well as had, yeah, we, we lived off the so land. So you were sustainable? We were pretty like much sustainable, yeah, amazing. with our food, yeah. yeah. Oh, abs actually, absolutely, other yeah. than a few grocery items and that. Mum was very much, I mean, I smile these days, mum was very much into pickling and fermenting and grew, bre uh, grew, grew bread, she grew <laughs> didn't grow that way. Baked bread, which was uh, sometimes was a hit or a miss with mum. I know she's probably <laughs> going to listen to this, but uh, my mum actually is a fantastic cook and a great gardener. And she's also a, a fantastic uh, watercolorist and artist and painted what she saw around. So that inspired my art and yeah, connection sorry, with I it as to say well. You are an artist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot that. Part. No, that's okay. There's too many things. No, that's it. Do. But that inspired me. And to be really honest, I, you know, at first, uh, when I first left home in that, it was like I left that behind me. I was off doing the things that you know that I really felt like I wanted to do and I moved back to the city and gardening although I liked flowers and plants and things like that and I, I had a real passion for flowers I didn't actually garden until I had my own family again so that's yeah that's sort of where we went with that so, I love yeah. how it always comes oh hold on as <laughs> yes hello. <laughs> hello keep going <laughs> so I can't hear you that's it <laughs> um I love how it often does a full circle, like yeah. some things that happen from mm. your childhood mm. or family 
you leave it for a period of time as you're sort Absolutely. of spreading your wings, but you do often just come back to that, don't exactly. you? Exactly. And it never left me, like the, the art never left me, no. the love of, I mean, I always had pot plants, I always had flowers. I just had that real sort of, I, I, I kept thinking it was like some part of French in me somewhere. It was, you know, uh, if I went out and bought food or, you know, when I was a, a teenager living in Sydney and in my early 20s, I'd have to get the bunch of flowers as well. You oh, know, yeah. just that sort of, I, I always had that connection. In the basket. In the basket, the yeah. fascination with it. And but yeah, as soon as the full circle, it was like once my family started, that was just a natural thing to start growing things. And, and then yeah. you naturally kind of went into some studies and kind of furthered that yes. even a little bit more. Yeah, I went into studies of naturopathy, botany as well at different times. Um, I finished some of the uh, disciplines that I've been trained in. I've self-trained a lot of things at times as well. My husband was a naval officer for yes. 40 years and we moved around as well. So it was hard to finish things all the time. But what I did learn from from people that I trained with at different institutions was that, you know, way back when there weren't any institutions to learn no. botany and a lot of the great discoveries, not that I've made any great discoveries, but a lot of that insight and that was gained just from being in the field. And you, I do have that training of being able to collect scientific evidence and to be able to um, then look at that in the different disciplines that I'm interested in, mostly uh, I know you're going to talk about it. I mean, we had a chat about ethnobotany, so yes. which is relatively new, I guess, um, not really, but it's starting to be a discipline that's trained, that's taught and offered in a lot of our larger universities as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, yeah. I think it's really interesting that idea of being trained in something and really mm. learning it. I think I I, I actually listened to a random quote. Um, I don't know who it was. Oh, it was actually Elon Musk. Randomly. Oh, okay. <laughs> like a video that talked about universities being um, an opportunity to um, show that you can um, do your homework and do your chores, like it's you're demonstrating it. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but then when you actually learn it, that's when, you, when you're when you practically learning something, then you're yes. really getting your hands into it, which I agree and disagree with, mm. but I understand the vein that he's coming from. And I think something yeah. like gardening, it really is, oh. you need to experience experience that absolutely you can't yeah. and i've there's different plants that i've come across over the years as well where you know i've read about it i i've heard all about it and until you actually see it and i'm smiling mm. at the moment because i'd never seen jade vine which is this amazing tropical plant that has these teal sort of coloured, oh. they're almost like little bananas coming off oh. the bottom. They're amazing. But they don't grow around here or in yes. New South Wales. And my folks now live, um, and my brother live now in Cairns. They moved uh, quite a few years ago. But I, when I first saw it, it was like all the training and all the yeah. things that I learned. Tick, 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 yeah, exactly. Tick, 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 tick. Made sense. And I was studying pollinators at the time. And then it was like I'd heard that bats pollinated them and, you know, because they're upside down. But until you actually go mm. and see the bats there and look at the whole plant and what it's doing and all that, it's like... Now, now that makes sense. So, but to, to, to just to look at the plant by itself without growing it yourself or without studying that as well, that's still just, a, you know, two sort dimensional. One layer, isn't yeah, you it? Need, yeah. I think you need all the layers. You need to understand that scientific research and method, methodology to find all those facts and to do so in an ethical way as well. Because mm. there's a lot of, you know, that, that that's a big thing with botany as well. We, we need to be able to learn these things and give back as mm. well and give, and give the knowledge, the new knowledge that we've found through our methods back as well to different communities. Um, but yeah, but gr gardening, I, I'm a, I, I don't think you can be a botanist or love botany or ethnobotany without growing something yourself. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah. And totally yourself, you know, yeah. and being able to see that go right through and make the mistakes as well yes. and the failures and then be better and listen to other people and experiment and, and do it yourself. But yeah. I love it. So, <laughs> one of the words, um, Cheryl, and you kept, uh, keep talking about which is something that a word that I only recently actually when I met you mm -hmm. and it was a huge like oh there's a word for it yeah there is a word <laughs> ethnobotany yes which yes yes for me in a food perspective if you followed little people nutrition for a while I'm very passionate about food obviously about the nutrition that it provides our bodies but really the connection that it has to where our food comes from but also who we share it with and mm. that connection with people and that history and that culture behind the foods which mm. is 
Is that how you would describe ethnobotany? It or? is. You've done a really, really good job of it, Mandy. Yeah. <laughs> That's really but good. For, for, for yeah. plants and... For a long time, there there was um, a bit of a misconception. The, the the term ethnobotany has been around for a long time. I guess it got popular in about the 1940s when there was a, a lot of exploration into the Amazon, mm. and a lot of there's a lot of different botanists that went in there and they found uh, plants of all types. Of course, they also found a lot of hallucinogens as well, mm -hmm. and these they they looked at for medicinal purposes and recreational purposes, mm. I guess, as well. And so they talked about ethnobotany, but not just those plants but all plants they were very interested in how the amazon people were connecting with plants and using them uh, for food for mm. building for for everything spiritual reasons medicinal reasons and yeah recreational or connecting to the spiritual practices as mm. well and the term was coined really then ethnobotany ethno humans mm. and botany plants so it's the connection Love between it. the two the, the problem it is it's a great term and i love now that we understand the term a bit uh, better it, unfortunately during the 1980s to 90s uh, a lot in sort of the new age sectors as well mm. it came to just mean hallucinogens so oh, even did it? yeah it did oh, yeah wow. when you, it didn't mean it a lot of people took it as yes, that it's like right, oh that's, that's what you're talking about you know yeah, right. it's how it's how plants affect humans you know yes. well no it's about it's and it's a relationship it's a relationship and, and it's yeah. backs and forth it's like it's not just what plants can do for us it's what we can do for plants as well yes. so and it, what to, to those of who study um other different disciplines think of it as like ecology is about mm -hmm. you know animals mm -hmm. and people yes. and and but we're talking about and everything we're just talking about people and plants and then it's how we can find out more about the uses and how we affect the land how we can affect uh the plants and having them around and also it's the cultures as well how we can when i said before about ethically giving back mm. a lot of these different cultures have lost the actual traditions of those plants and yes. their land as well it's not up to other cultures to come and tell them what to do it's mm. up to, to you know their elders and to preserve and to re to rebuild that but other people who are working in these fields it, it, you have a a real um it's a duty but it's also what you want to do yeah, is to so give, that, about yeah, it, give yeah. that knowledge back if you find that knowledge you give were, it back you yeah. were given it someone helped mm, you at some mm, point mm. oh yeah, yeah exactly absolutely but to be able to 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 do that and that's what we're talking about here at swamp is mm. now um helping different groups of all types around here and even the indigenous groups that come and do their do, do their together. work and be together yeah and yeah. it's like if i've discovered this it's like hey i read this somewhere you know it might be valid or not or this is what we're doing so it is that whole connection connection and respect for the plant world, different cultures. And yeah, there's no ownership in it. No. it. It is about keeping things alive and going on and understanding where things come from. There's a lot of history in it. Mm. Like, and I'm a botanical historian freak. <laughs> I love it. Freak. So there's a lot of, yeah, as you know, Mandy, we're, yeah, we're always sort of saying, it's like, did you know? That's, that's Sherilyn's fun facts about plants. But um, but those sorts of things need to be preserved. That's what I mean. Yes. Those stories of plant, plant stories. Oh, and stories, yeah. yeah. that's it. And so people, we needed to know those stories. And a lot of our folklore actually comes from, that's how we taught people. Yes. You know, and yes. people look at sort of the magical side. And I do write about those things mm. because that's the way you would be able to remember the story about you know the little princess who ended up getting itchy all over the place because yes. she went into those nettles and all this and then that was because little gremlins threw the nettles at her now if you told that story to a child they'll go oh, i don't want the little gremlins you know that live in there to throw the nettles i'm not going there but if you just said to a child particularly back then that's yes. the only way to do it don't go over there because you'll get stung they're going to go well, let's see yeah let's see so that's yes. where a lot of our folklore and so-called magic and things uh, come from because it's a way of describing things and and passing that information on about plants because there's so many plants how how do you do this when you don't have a written way of keeping that information so they're uh, fascinating and you find little nuggets in there about plants that you can go oh yeah i didn't think of that or let's go and explore that why did they say that about these plants back then or in that at uh, that form yeah that's beautiful mm. i love as well uh Sherilyn, we were talking just before and i've said it to you a few times mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks you've coined this little hashtag which for me is kind of ethnobotany here on the central coast <laughs> in especially for swamp yeah. um when community gardens because we've seen some really powerful mm. um connection already here when did we start swamp like when did we actually come on site here like september 
November October, more. November. Yeah, sort of more November. By the time we yeah. talked about it, we'll yeah, talk yeah. the discussion, maybe like November or on yeah, ground. Yeah. Like, so really in the, only a couple of months. Yep. When community gardens, the extension of ethnobotany is like sort of almost like the practical, like we're here. <laughs> it's been profound and yeah. like I'm a crier, so it does me make me cry. We've been crying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I wanted to um, hear from you mm. uh, some of your experiences, perhaps in the past, but also here when mm. community gardens and how that's helped um, different groups, maybe families as well, but different mm -hmm. kind of community groups or, or, or mm. cultures or where you've worked, where when community gardens, dot, 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 like this then happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'm going to stick on the coast at the moment because yeah. I think it's most relevant and, it, and, it's, and I've seen it so often repeat itself when people start learning from each other, they connect over something as simple as a plant. Mm. They realise, you know, the mystery goes away for those who haven't gardened before. Uh, they see the passion of this simplicity. It's not any great esoteric, you know, yes. magical thing that I have to learn or a really hard thing to get into this club. You know, it's there. It's what you eat. It's yes. what you look at. It's 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 right it's there. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's here. It's right, it's, here. it's right here. And when you when it is like that, and and when people you see the light come on for gardeners and then non-gardeners it's just such a it, it is uh it is a profound experience yeah. because you get it's like oh you get it you get me and there's no there's this no pretension about it or anything it's just as pure as that and and seeing people just come together uh that love the environment as well because mm. if you like plants you like the environment and and having that um it's like a, it is a family feeling that yes. we're all doing this and sharing and you can't garden in a box really you can <laughs> but really gardening in a community is is just mm. so much better. Plants live in a community and they're happier yes. together. You know, seriously. Humans um, are. We're so. I know, I know. And, and that's beings. been that's yeah. been the tough thing in, in the last yes. twelve months. But I I gave a little. Um, a bit of advice and and I can't remember if it was it, where it was but somebody that I work with at the radio came in last week and this is a, a really good one and she said look I'm I was having all these troubles with my pot plants and I heard you say that what you need to do is put all the pot plants together and it makes a little community in a micro environment and they will thrive yeah Stop it, and so she amazing. I don't, don't cry yeah. <laughs> And at Nays Doreen, she's at Coast FM, she's, well, I know she loves watching these things. And we had uh, this wonderful conversation and I was saying, yeah, well, because it does make it, you know, on a scientific, a botanical um, level, this microclimate where it's humid, but they like being together. And I said, you know, you don't like to be by yourself all the time. You like yes. to come in here and be with other plants. She said, they're all thriving. I could not believe it. And she uh... said, and not in months, Sharon, straight away, they're all like happier. So when we, you're in these community gardens and doing things together, it's the same kind of thing. Now, I look at that bunch of plants and I'm sure, I think she said it's the first time she's ever been able to grow maidenhair ferns. So she's got fragile ones, little ones, big ones. It doesn't matter what they're yes. doing. They're all thriving together. And I see that. And that analogy with gardens is the same thing. You know, we were talking earlier this morning that not um, everybody has to be a fantastic gardener. You don't have to garden at all to be mm, part of mm, a community mm, garden. Mm. There's other things you can do, do. And you're still part of that group, that group of doing things. And yes coming together with some sort of vision to build something as simple as a garden you know oh, and it's what it's what's within us anyway yes. it really does um yeah it's kind of like you get it and you see different people as well come along um and help out in your family even i've had that experience as well <laughs> with my yeah, husband I know. yeah well, yeah he's amazing. not a, he's not a gardener no yeah. and he was tentative to come here and now he loves it he loves it love he's, him. yeah we can't get rid of him <laughs> Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's coming and helping out and that's what you see. And it's not the other thing I think people get worried about uh, community gardens and the majority are like this. They're not, uh, you know, we do have a structure. We do have, uh, and I've designed this one and we do have, of course, we follow the seasons and we plant things, but the, the majority are, are and all the ones I've seen are more informal. It's not like, mm. right, you come here, get that shovel and go over here. We're a group. Like, you don't feel so good today. That's okay. Just sit over there and read a book just yes. as long as you're here. Yes. It, it is a garden. It's a relaxing yes. place. There's work that needs to be done. But you just being here and being part of it is so important. It's just as important. You, you just being that pot plant sitting yes, there with the group is just as important. Yeah. You know, some days we're here and we're like working our butts off, yes. digging things and doing all this. And some other days we're just, Having you know, we're just... Matter. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like today. Um, but that, and that's what it's all about. It's like, and that's when I say we're in community gardens. It's yes. like when they do, these are the magical things to happen. And then we're sharing other ideas and, and uh, things that we want to do in our own lives. You're doing your play group yes. and, do, and connecting with the children. We've got um, Cassie here who's very dedicated to women's groups and uh, a, a bit more of the spiritual side of things as well. Yeah. And she's doing that and not so much a gardener, but... I am, Graham yes. is. We've got people who are gardeners who are going, that's a really good thing. You need a garden around that. Yeah. We'll show you. Not not we're just going to do it for you. Yes, no, we'll show you how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 over, yeah, and yeah. oversee it. Like that's the thing with people that are in a garden. But when community comes together to garden, good things happen, magical things happen. It's already uh, happening. Yeah, it's yeah. Just Friendships happen. Yes, yeah, as well. Which is powerful. You make really good friends in gardens that, um, that are come together for the right reasons. That's what I always say as well so if you come together with I'm not going to be the I'm not trying to be the best garden I'm not trying to be you know this and that I just want to bring my community together and create something around plants and preserve the land and preserve you know and and create that ethno botanical uh, connection it's amazing what happens you know yeah. when that happens because it's just it comes from that basis of caring and and friendship that's where yeah. it comes and we didn't I didn't know any of you guys no, <laughs> I didn't know you yeah, I <laughs> and know. we're really good friends now and that's what happens and I and I say that there's so many people that are isolated in communities even here and I you know you see yourself on Facebook pages and that and they're oh but I can't go to the garden because I don't know anything it, who cares just come and be the pot plant that's in <laughs> be the pot plant that's on the side and you'll soon grow <laughs> you know and you'll soon learn Something. You'll soon learn something, and look, you, look, you, you might cook, you might, who knows? You know, you might be good at. We were talking about we needed someone here to do database and yeah, type yeah, things of in, course. someone just to take photos. You don't have to be a fantastic photographer. No, document just it. Document things. Um, somebody to just keep the gates open. And I'm not just talking about this community garden. I'm no, talking everywhere. about every community yeah. garden. The biggest thing they need is just people to keep the gates open when yes. they have open days for people. You don't need to know anything. One thing you said actually, Sherilyn, mm. before when we were talking beforehand was the idea that a community garden is not the replacement of your garden. Yes. So that so sometimes and I'm guilty of that in the past, mm -hmm. thinking, Oh well, I have a garden, so I don't need to be part of a community garden. So yep. can you tell me a bit more about that what we were talking mm -mm -mm -mm. about? I think that there's been and and it comes from the inner city's uh, beginnings of community gardens, which were something sorely needed and still needed where people mm. don't have the space don't have necessarily the time either to tend for gardens all the time so being in a group of people where you just go once a week once a month mm. and look after something together or have a plot and it's under that thing is is great especially if you don't have the space and that's still needed yes. and that is still a, a even a facet and a side eventually of this space here and I know a lot of spaces but I have, you know, I'm on 900 square meters. Yeah, you've got a thriving garden. I've got a huge garden. Yes. <laughs> but I've still always been involved with community gardens because yes. it's it's when community gardens, when you get together. So you're also learning. Yes. Um, I'm not that great on citrus. You know, I can grow citrus trees. We've got an amazing, my co-garden um, garden curator. curator here, Graham, he's amazing. And, and him and his wife, Sue, are fantastic with citrus. I'm learning from him. You never, yeah, it doesn't matter how much amazing. you know, that's it. You know, I can't wait till we get roses here because I'm a bit of a rose queen. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, rose queen queen. Of yes, I do like my roses. And they're great <laughs> pollen. They they bring in the pollinators as well. But the um the thing is, yeah, even if you've got your own garden, well it's time for you to share that knowledge as share well. Knowledge. You know, and also it's if you love gardening and gardens, it's like I love coming here, you know, and yes. it's to see something grow from sort of nothing as well, or to come and help out a little bit, and also to grow things that maybe not you won't be able to grow necessarily in your own garden. There's things mm. that I can't garden I don't have the space for mm -hmm. um, we're eventually leasing plots here hopefully in yes. the second year but a lot of gardens that's how they work just on leasing plots mm. and I know um, with Graham my co-curator uh, curator, he's got a lovely garden where he is it's a bit more on the coast and he wanted to grow a certain vegetables that just weren't weren't probably it's right to grow there, there yeah. yeah so he's got he's got a, a couple of plots in a couple of community gardens, gardens on the coast so you know and he's like master gardener because he knows that in those other areas it's much more conducive to grow that sort of plant but also he likes the connection with the people there yeah. so it's you know he likes to go and see them see what they're doing and have you know and and you know you might sort of think how does he have the time but he's just popping in there and popping in there and that's I think that's what we've got to do and also to be part of creating the community around gardening as well and mm -hmm. you know we're really trying here and many community gardens have programs you know of yes. teaching 
uh, tra- you know, teaching and training and children's programs and mental health programs yes. and community support programs as well. You don't have to be involved in all those, but no. you're part of what's happening. Yes. You know, that's Not it. that magic that's being oh, created. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I think of it, you know, it's um, it's like it's it's like the, the ultimate gardening club, you know. <laughs> it's here. Come, you know, you've got your own thing at home. Um, I don't want to use, you know, drinking or eating analogies, <laughs> but it's kind of, yeah, well, it's kind of like that. It's like you yeah. can do that at home, but you can also go it's to great the, at the great big together yeah exactly at a huge long table exactly exactly so see what about some things that you know like we've sort of um, alluded to some people think oh I'm not a gardener Mm -hmm. my background's not gardening I'm Mm -hmm. very much learning here Mm -hmm. at Swamp which is amazing (laughs) and just building my confidence Mm -hmm. to take back to my own garden yes Uh, what can people do and namely um, we've got people on here that are sort of educators or work with children Mm -hmm. how what are some sort of simple things if they're feeling tentative or nervous to be able to grow things what can they do at home or in a child care center or early learning center the biggest mistake i see and i'm sure all um experienced gardens see everybody most people start off too big too fast (laughs) to everything they want it all they want it now and and it's just not going to happen you know that's it but also well it might happen but you might you'll find that you can't keep up the work you're struggling with the work with things that go wrong so it's sort of like little gardens little problems big gardens big problems that's that's exactly it beginners need to start small you don't need you know my advice is start with herbs if you've done nothing before don't be going and spending what is it three or four dollars for a packet of you know chives chives, and 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 parsley it's like oh fresh stuff out of the garden you know um so grow herbs grow half a dozen of herbs grow what you eat i think too many people go along to to gardening centers and go that looks great zucchinis look good i'm going to grow some zucchinis and then they get eight plants i need zucchinis (laughs) yeah i mean i do that's yeah yeah, it's like only only you eat zucchinis no one else does and you end up with 20 million zucchinis and you only need (laughs) one plant so it's it's what do you eat all the time you know that's it and replace those herbs first and then a couple tomatoes are an easy one and lettuce i would be everybody can grow tomatoes lettuce and herbs even in pots that's it but start small the first year okay have a talk to people that live around you as well uh, and see what they're growing Mm -hmm. and what's successful as well they might be able to give you seeds and cuttings that's another thing as well see what's successful with them uh, and also go and talk to the local community garden go and talk to your local community (laughs) they will tell you they will they will help you you know people are there even wandering in and saying what's growing well here oh i live i live over why i live here they'll be like oh you know what blah 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 this is going really well and also seasonal i think a lot of people i don't think they take as much notice of what needs to be you need to plant as per the season that's mm, what you need to mm. do yeah. i think maybe or well, i feel in my kind of community mm. that people understand eating seasonally but then planting seasonally as well unfortunately though this season's been very i mean summers did used to be quite wet but then they do kind of change exactly. a little bit but so, yeah, yeah being yeah. aware of that uh, yeah and it I mean, sounds like a little plug but you know um i do a local radio uh, show gardening yes. show and local gardening newspapers as well and and i love gardening australia Australia, you know, I swear by it because it's still local Australia, but Australia is a big place. The yes, world's a big is. place. Yes. So seek out people who do things like I do locally, locally you know, yes. and local councils, local uh, Indigenous land councils are really good. But you might find that somebody is producing a local gardening show or a column or something like that. So you can touch base with that person, read what they're doing as yes. well and find out local because it's going to be different. It's even going to be different from one, I'm sorry to say, one house to the next. Yes. You can still generalise on the area as well. And the people who work in our local local nurseries yes. particularly the um the family ones and the small business ones as well are amazing they are staffed with people who really know yeah they are and they're gardeners they're, they're gardeners they're so much knowledge go on yeah. and ask them you know that's yeah. what they're there for and I, I know when you go and ask them something like that nice way <laughs> and say look i've got a, a plot i know nothing and don't be scared to say they're happy they're happier than yes. someone that comes in and you know no, I do this. I, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. just go and say, just look, ask. this is what I want to do. This is my space. Take a photograph of your space as well and listen to their advice as well and tell them what your budget is of what you want to do and that you want to start small. 99% of people you're going to talk to in those places are going to be really helpful and, and know themselves the costs and, and how to sort of arrange that for you and it'll help you uh, be successful. The, 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 the number one overriding thing is soil. Nothing grows in bad yes, soil. Yes, soil. <laughs> nothing grows in yeah, bad soil it's their food it's their food and um yeah and to keep feeding them as well we yes. sort of forget that I there's a very that, good actually. yeah there's a very good ad on television i don't know if it's still on and it's, it's like all the kids you know they're asking for food from the mum and she, she's just giving them water all the time 
and they're like, I'm hungry. And she's like, yep, have another glass of water. And then it goes, it says, you, you need more than just water and so do your plants. And I was like, yes. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's okay, so true. A, I'm going to take that nugget for me. Yeah. <laughs> so they need to be, it needs mm. to be a good soil. So don't, don't try to, you can't grow good plants in crap soil. It just yes. doesn't happen. So your soil needs to be enriched and per the plants. Na yes. An Australian native plant is going to need a much different uh, thing than I'm looking at zucchinis here. They're yes. Mediterranean things, English things, much different. And then you know they're going to use that food up yes so you need to replenish that whether yes. it's digging in some more rotted down manure whether it's putting sea salt on which is a liquid uh sea, sea emulsion but whatever it is it's going to have to keep going it can't just sit there and yeah it doesn't get fed once because, a year exactly yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's not yeah just you can't just go like well that's it like needs to be fed six and, times a yeah day. the food yeah. because they're using up what's in that sauce yeah. so you need to put it back and then crop rotation you've got to understand that but that's getting a little bit co uh, more complicated but just to start off start small good soil yeah. keep feeding and and grow what's suitable for your area as well. That's lovely. Mm. I have one last question. <laughs> That's okay. What are you growing right now? Yes. What are you about to harvest? Mm -hmm. And what are you about to plant? We are in February yes. on New South Wales coast, east coast. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what I'm harvesting at the moment, I'm still harvesting lots of lettuce. And uh, we're lucky here we can grow lettuce and tomatoes all the way around. Yeah. Um, but I sort of change over more to cost lettuce because it doesn't oh, bolt. And, lettuce last yeah, night, it does, yeah. does does quite well. I'm also pulling up the last of all of my tomatoes from summer and I yes. will replant some. I usually just do the tiny toms, the two yes. little ones during winter you need to rotate tomatoes you have every three years from where they are because they really they suck everything oh, do down. They? okay good to know so i'm harvest i'm planting a grim and newer crop of uh, mustard greens and radishes to replenish that soil there yes. but i'm also getting ready to uh, plant a lot of the winter vegetable soon but i'm giving my garden a bit of a rest yeah, okay. and then i'm always harvesting oh i know what else i'm harvesting um uh, elderflower. I've got a whole lot of elderflower Ooh. to make some cordial. Yes, so I'm about to make some nice elderflower cordial. So Yum. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's it. I'm going. It's a funny time of the year. Yeah, yeah it is. And I've got loads of um, herbs as always. I've just got. I do too many herbs at the I'm moment. Just not growing <laughs> herbs well. It's been really wet. Most yeah. herbs are Mediterranean, and so they need a drier uh, thing. And you'll find your sages and things like that are probably dying off and yeah. all that because it's just it's too humid and too wet for them yeah, right. with all okay. this rain we've been having. So, yeah. but they need to be in a dry, sunny spot. Most of them. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, great. Same as your lavender. Everyone keeps telling me they don't grow lavender. I'm like, I'm growing lavender. You're doing good. Yeah, I'm put doing good. Keep put your herbs in your lavender then. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sherilyn. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thank I'm you. going to pop down in um, uh, when I put this up on a blog post. I'll have all of Sherilyn's links to, and I forgot to mention because you're also actually on radio, Coast <laughs> FM, and um, the Coast Community News. You have a regular column in yes. there. Um, and all the links where you can find Sherilyn Darcy. But the main one, SherilynDarcy.com. That's it. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.